the end of the Mega Drive's life, there were more games that pushed the hardware even more for better graphics and gameplay. And Rystar was one of them, so let's have a little look. In 1995, Rystar hit the Mega Drive and Game Gear. A whole new character designed by Sega and looking like a very promising game. After a space tyrant, Kaiser Greedy uses mind control on various planet elders for them to obey him. The inhabitants of planet Flora pray for a hero to help them. When the prayers reach the mother of shooting stars, Orutu, she awakens one of her children, Rystar. He must grant their wishes and save them. There are six planets to save before you meet Greedy himself. Each planet will have one of Greedy's minions to defeat before you move on to the next planet. You start the game on planet Flora and straight away you're hit with a palette of colours you didn't think could be possible on the Mega Drive. It's all very well at look and spectacular but does the rest of the game follow suit? The game is a simple platformer where you must go from one end to the other while taking out small enemies along the way. Rather than jumping on enemies, you use your extendable arms to grab an enemy. Once you grab them, Rystar will shoot forward and headbutt them, taking them out instantly. You don't just use your arms to attack, you can use them to traverse across horizontal or vertical ladders, knock down trees to access the other side of a chasm, or turn lights on to illuminate a stage. Also scattered across each stage are treasure chests, which you can break open using the same attack manoeuvre. They may contain gems or stars. Yellow stars in the right hand corner represent your health status. One hit will remove one star. There's normally enough to be found in each level to keep you topped up, but that doesn't mean that you can be careless. Blue stars can also be found and they will fill your health back to maximum. And hidden in some places you can find extra lives. These will be little miniatures rice star trophies. During a stage you may come across a star handle, which if you grab you can spin around to gain speed and let go to fly at high speed through a stage. Any enemy that stands in your way will instantly be wiped out. There are also hidden handles which can take you to a bonus stage. Here you must reach the top of the level to claim the treasure. The same handle can be found at the end of each stage, the higher you go the bigger the bonus skill. At the end of Planet Flora you must take on the boss. A minion attaches itself to an elder and attacks you. You must avoid its projectiles and hit him. Once you've got a few hits in, he'll start to change colour to indicate how close you are to defeating him. The post-stage cutscene is just the perfect transition between stages. You leave the stage at high speed and rock into space. While your score is being counted, Rystar will fly through space and onto the next planet. Stage 2 is Planet Undertow where it's a mixture of dry land and water. There's more eye popping artwork here and plenty of marine life to deal with. Swimming underwater is very easy to control and using the jump button will make you swim faster. Some areas become blocked which you must destroy a number of the same enemy to unblock it. Whilst underwater the further you go down the darker it gets which is pretty cool although the transition is a bit sudden. The effects of the building underwater look great as they have quivering effect to them. The boss here is Osat, a hammerhead shark that you'll see in the background. He'll speed towards you where you must grab him quickly before he disappears behind you again. Each successful hit will cause him to bounce around the screen and knock out one of the bums on the floor. Once all have been hit, it's onto the next planet. Stage 3 is Planet Scorch, where as you may guess, it's full of fire. There's quite a few traps here to catch you out, like the cage where you have to throw a decor Rise Star statue to set it off. Grabbing hold of ladders and pipes here is pretty much all you'll be doing. Quick reactions are essential to avoid falling into the flames. 
This isn't really a tricky level, but your directional grabbing skills may be put to the test. At the end you'll come to Adahan 4 where you'll see a mole type creature in the background. He'll dig his way up to you where you must avoid his claws shooting out from the ground. After a couple of hits you'll fall down a pit where you'll free fall. Attack as soon as possible to finish him off. Once you broke his armour and left him sobbing, it's time for the next planet. Stage 4 is Planet Sonata, which is a very musical planet and probably the one I hate most, mainly down to the annoying music in it. In this you must carry a metronome and throw it to a bird that will move on once he's received it. It's pretty much rinse and repeat with this. There's some puzzle elements to it which doesn't take too much thinking. I just don't care for stuff like this in a platform game. The difficulty eventually gets turned up and getting hit will be hard to avoid. There's drums you bounce off which are a massive pain in the ass as you have to avoid the spikes as well as trying to grab a pole to pull yourself to the other side. Lives will be lost here unless you are quick to react. The boss here is a walk sing, an angry bird that will fire musical notes at you as well as feathers and falling debris. He'll stand on the perch and sing out of tune. You must headbutt the perch to make him stop then attack after he rolls off. Avoiding all obstacles can be hard and frustrating, but once you work out the pattern, you can be taken out with minimal damage. Stage 5 is Planet Freon. A very slippery planet where you'll start off in a similar style to Sonic 3's Ice Cap Zone. Here there's lots of skating around and timing jumps perfectly will become quite a challenge. Avoiding enemies while sliding also can catch you out. Later on you'll be underwater again with enemies that fire spike projectiles at you as well as turbines that can push you back. If you do manage to get to the end you'll face eat a more lunch. Not overly complicated though. You must snatch a hot meal off a minion that appears and throw it into the blob's mouth. This will cause him to melt slightly. Timing is everything here which isn't really that difficult. Avoiding his attacks are quite simple too. Stage 6 is Planet Automaton, or Automaton. This is where things get tough. There's spikes, underwater sections and obstacles where you'll need your grabbing skills honed to perfection. There are plenty of mini bosses to deal with too. Once you've got through the huge maze it's time to take on your rain and power. This alien creature stays in the background while his minion attacks you. Once he is down you must make the alien attack you with his tentacle claw but jump out of the way just in time so he hits his minion. If you do time it correctly, this shouldn't take too long. You'll then chase after him to a different location where you fight him and his machine. Once again, avoiding projectiles and hitting the front of his machine until he has to get out to fix it. After this, it's on to Greedy himself. He'll fly around and throw things at you, lightning bolts, and little minions too. Hitting him is a pain in the ass, but it can be done if timed right. This game is a perfect example of what the Mega Drive is capable of. Great gameplay, amazing graphics and a soundtrack that is very memorable. All tracks sound great except that stupid singing stage. Even the transition from stage to stage sounds perfect, and showing Rystar going from one planet to the next. A lot of thought has gone into this game and it really shows. Character design, animation and expressions look awesome. Little things stand out like on Planet Freon, if you let Rystar stand still, you'll start to build a snow sculpture on himself. And his pirouette across the ice is pretty cool too. Just seeing the end scene still makes me think the producers loved working on this character. Thankfully they didn't stick to the original concept design and calling him Feel. A sequel would have been nice if the right people were on the team, but I suppose it was just too late for another 16-bit release. It would never have been Sonic's successor, but I think it can stand proudly next to him. <laughs>